Have you ever applied for a job as a tutor and were shocked at how little tutors make? Many tutoring companies charge $50 to $100 an hour and pay the tutor only $10 to $20 an hour. If you start looking on sites like Wyzant and Thumbtack, some tutors have resorted to charging only $10 an hour to try to be the lowest price on the market because they think that they will beat out the competition. But this is mistake number 14. Tutors think that parents won't pay top dollar for your tutoring services. And if you don't state your value proposition, that is kind of like the thing that makes you stand out from everyone else, then potential clients won't do that either. And you will only be worth $10 an hour. So watching this video is gonna make you more money because you are gonna learn how to charge more per hour and get paid it every time without your customers complaining that you charge too much. My name is Joanne Kaminsky and I started off charging $40 an hour for my tutoring services because I had no idea if I could make this work. I mean, I questioned whether people would pay that, but as soon as I found that the larger companies were charging between $50 and $100 an hour, I knew there was a market for tutoring and people would pay that amount. I just needed to learn how to market my services and get off of the sites online that were charging so little. I am going to show you a pricing formula for services and tutoring that will get you thinking a little bit differently. So let's take a look at some common pricing models that are out there right now. now some people charge by the hour and some charge using packages. So let's take a look at a difference of both of them. When you charge per hour, you tell people how much it's going to cost for each hour that they're going to work with you. Then you can determine how many hours they're going to work with you on a weekly basis. From there, you get to choose if you would like parents to pay before each session, before each week, or before the next month. Always have people pay before because this will ensure that you are not chasing your money down afterwards. Now I have people pay automatically and after this video, you can click on the eye on the screen or the link in the description to see how I do that. But first, let's get you more money for your tutoring services. Now, the other way to sell your services is through a package. This way you get people to commit to getting a result. Now some people sell packages of four or 10 sessions. However, when you do this, you are going to have to sell them again after that four or 10 sessions are done. And if you want to do packages right, take some advice from the bigger companies. They will calculate the amount of time it's going to take to get the desired result the parent is looking for. They quote you just like an orthodontist does, and then they break it down into weekly or monthly payments. Now, most tutors do not have the sales skills to have this kind of conversation. So this is not my suggestion for them. If you feel that you can make a $3,000 to $5,000 sale with a parent, then you definitely have a chance of doing this correctly. Plus, some students may want to continue on with you, and it's easier to do that if they're just paying automatically monthly. Now, I have actually made more money over time doing automatic payments than if I tried to sell a package effectively. Now, choose the model that is going to work best for you. Now next, we're gonna take a look at how to calculate an hourly rate. And I'm gonna warn you that this is a different formula than what teachers uh, use or tutors use to get a job. So to get a job, most people will take a look at how much experience a person has and their level of education. And these two pieces of information are important, but there is certainly more to take into consideration. First, here are some guidelines. If you are a high school or college student, you can charge $10 to $20 an hour. If you're an adult but have no experience teaching, you can charge between $20 to $30 an hour. If you have credentials, you can charge between $30 to $40 an hour. And your experience matters. You can, you can add $1 for each year of experience that you have. The number one goal is results. So if you're able to get the desired results for your students, you can begin charging $60 an hour for your services, regardless of experience and credentials. But there's more to take into consideration, and, and that is how much do you need to make to make a big enough profit to meet your financial needs to run your business? See, the numbers I just mentioned to you are a great starting point, but now you need to figure out if the number I gave you is going to fit with your expenses 
that you have to run your business. Now, in the first year, there's going to be more expenses. Some people need technology. Others need business courses or classes that are going to help them with running an effective business. But then there are certain tools and subscriptions that you need to pay for to meet your students' needs. For example, if you get a website, there are ongoing expenses that you need to pay. There may be certain resources that you've loved, like I have. I love using Zoom and Raz Kids, and these are two tools that have yearly membership fees. And there's a fee free version of Zoom, but if you decide to do like group classes, it's gonna benefit from getting their yearly subscription. Now at some point, you need to think, how much profit do I wanna make in order to meet my business needs and my personal needs? And there is a great tool out there called Hourly Rate Calculator. So we're gonna take a look at it. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take a look at like how much money is it that you want to be able to make in a year. So I'm gonna use this tool, it's called Hourly Rate, and I have a link for you guys inside of the description. We take a look here, I can add in what it is that I want to be able to make each year. So maybe I want to be able to make the same amount that I was making when I left the, the classroom, right? So maybe I want to make um, uh, $50,000. And here, I maybe I want to improve by, let's say, $1,000. I'm just going to type on in $1,000. Uh, I want to take a look at billable hours per week. Um, so let's say I put in that I'm going to work, I don't know, 30 hours a week, five days a week. How many hours do you plan to work each day? Let's see, if I was doing 30 a week and I wanted to work five days a week, I need to work like six hour days. We're gonna keep this at 80% because we wanna we want take into consideration that not all of our time is being spent on just the, the tutoring, right? Like I have, to, I have to do the advertising, the marketing, the lesson planning. So we're gonna take that into account as well. I can leave vacation days at like 15, public religious days at five, sick days. I don't ever take sick days, I'm gonna put two. I mean, it's very rare that I get sick now that I'm not in the classroom. Uh, and then you can put in here any any travel rent, any of those kinds of fees that you can put on in there. We're going to put in here, you know, it might be like 500 a year uh, communications. Uh, that would include your Zoom. It would include your phone bill. And you can put that on in there. So let's say that that ends up being 1000 per year. Um, subscriptions, you know, I'm just going to right now make up a number for this one. Um, office supplies, I don't really ever spend that much on office supplies, so I'm going to put 100 on here. And then I am going to put here for um, other expenses, I don't know, maybe, maybe there's like $1,000 in other expenses. I don't know. We're just kind of doing that. Now, if you want to add more lines, more, more things, you absolutely can do that. Marketing, advertising, maybe you want to put in there that you're going to spend like 200 and you get to decide, is this month or per year? So these were actually per year numbers that I was putting in there. Um, so that's, I want to make sure that I click that correctly. Communications for the year, travel for the year. I want to make sure that I, I select that properly. And now we're going to see what I should charge per hour. It says 97.49. <laughs> All right. So I clearly I didn't do my numbers right. I was guessing on a lot of things here. So, uh, but you can play with this tool and see, you know, does it come close to what you think that you should be, uh, be paid in order to meet all of your expenses and all of your needs? If you're getting a number like that, um, then maybe your expenses are too high and you just have to see, okay, where can I cut back? So if I cut back on my subscriptions, let's move this down to like a thousand and maybe we cut down the communications down to like 500. Does that change then our hourly rate? A little bit, but not too much there. Um, let's not take vacation days. I actually do take like, let's say seven um, vacation days, public or religious holidays. I think I only take two. We'll see if that affects it at all. 
Yeah, we're down to like 8303. So yeah, the, I didn't figure out these numbers. I was just kind of guessing on them. So you want to actually put in your real number so that you can get an actual number that is going to actually meet what it is. I And I think you do have to put a number in here if you want to increase. Um, I don't know if you have to or not, but let's check this out. Let's see if I had to do that. I didn't, no, okay, cool. So let's just say I, I just wanna make the five fifty thousand dollars a year, then I can do that. So again, I just threw in some fake numbers in there. So I'm around where I need to be charging. I'm charging around $75 an hour. And that's, that's pretty much around where I need to be in order to continue to make it worth uh, my time for my students and for me. Now, I did leave the link for this tool in the description so that you can easily get to it. Put your numbers in there. See what you get. This is going to give you a ballpark of what you should charge. Now, after you have taken these things into consideration, are you charging enough money? So I'm curious how much you are charging or are thinking of charging for your services. Comment below. I want to know. We're going to continue this conversation. Now, if you've liked the information in the video so far, please hit like, subscribe, and that little bell. Now, many people want to know how to increase their prices without losing customers, right? And at this point, you may have realized that you need to raise your prices. Mm -hmm. And if you're in this position, I am really proud of you because this means that you're beginning to not only understand your worth, but also take into account how much money it costs to run an online tutoring business, which, by the way, is one of the cheapest businesses to start and run on the planet. <laughs> now, there are two ways to go about this. I tried the first way and I personally hated it. I tried to increase my prices by like $5 an hour. I personally called each of my clients. I told them about this price change and when it would start happening. And what do you think happened? I mean, some people were okay with it. Some rejected the idea and I was left kind of feeling icky and uncomfortable. So after this experience, I just decided, you know what, I am just going to go up by like $10 an hour for all of my new clients. And eventually over the year, as I replace the old clients with some new ones, I will eventually be making more money. And I love this new strategy. Not one person complained about my new rate because they never knew what my old rate was. <laughs> they just moved ahead and paid it. And I like simple, you guys. How about you? If you like when things are super simple like this, give me a toot toot for tutor in the comments. Now, our toot toot for tutor in the comments uh, in our community is kind of like the same thing as like a woot woot. <laughs> now, I've seen people raise their prices through emails with a date when the change is going to happen, and this has worked out really well for them. They may have lost like one or two clients, but not enough to warrant raising uh, not warrant raising their prices. So do what feels comfortable for you. And this is the most beautiful thing about starting an online tutoring business. You get to make all of your decisions that you need and no one can tell you that you're wrong. If it works for you, then it works for you. Don't let other people tell you how to do it. You need to decide what is going to work for you and then stick with it. Now, as people increase in their confidence, they begin charging more money for their tutoring services. And this is one of the benefits of joining us on Facebook at the Ultimate Support Group for Online Tutors. If people begin feeling more confident and charging more. So if you haven't joined us there yet, make sure to do so. Also, if you know someone who could benefit from this information, please pass this video on to help them know what is the right amount to charge. Now, in the next video, we're going to take a look about, talk about mistake number 15, how some tutors start off with an agency and then get the client to begin working solely for them. I believe that ethics are an important thing to have in business. And if you want your tutoring business to thrive, you will want to know ways where it is easy to be unethical. So join me in the next video. Until then, my name is Joanne Kaminsky, the online tutor business coach, helping you get found, hired, and referred.